Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 12, States of Matter, Part 3. So in the first two parts, we've talked about gases, their diffusion, effusion, um, any kind of kinetic molecular behavior that we can predict. Um, we're going to end up summarizing gas behaviors and move on to liquids here. So notice that in this video, we're going to talk about how gases condense to form liquids. Then we're going to talk about kinetic molecular theory of a liquid. And then lastly, we're going to identify the attractive forces of a liquid. So you might ask yourself, well, what does or how does a gas condense? Notice that you need to lower the temperature in order for this to happen. Um, what, what you eventually want is the attractive forces to take over and have less kinetic energy. So by lowering the kinetic energy, um, you're able to slow down the molecules long enough for them to start to stick together. So when you cool the gas, the molecules start to clump up. And notice that um, at a low temperature, that's essentially when this happens. OK, so here we have kinetic theory of a liquid. So notice that liquids, they're essentially clusters of particles that are weakly attracted to each other. But think of it as like swimming. These molecules swim past each other, so they have the freedom to move. Um, not as much as gases, but definitely more than solids. So notice that kinetic theory explains why we have definite volume of a liquid. They're still attracted to each other. And then the fact that they have the freedom of movement, they cannot move around. I'm sorry, they can move around. Um, the, the liquid will flow to different parts of the container. Okay, so here's a representation of water. And what we have with this molecule is what we call intermolecular forces. So this dot is not a bond. Please remember that. It's just an attraction. It's sort of like uh, a magnet being attracted to a piece of metal, okay? Um, it's not a sharing of electrons. So in liquids, we have a couple different forces. We have what we call dipole-dipole, and you're going to be very familiar with this by the end of the chapter. And then the last one is London dispersion forces. Okay, dipoles. So dipole, you have to have a covalent bond. And in that covalent bond, what happens is the electrons, they start having a stronger attraction to one of the atoms for that covalent bond. And what happens is you see, this is actually a Greek delta symbol. You'll notice that one atom will have a slightly positive charge, and then the other atom will have a slightly negative charge. And we're going to practice this in class. And notice that you need to have two or more molecules in order for this to happen. Okay, It's not one molecule within itself. You need to have two different molecules with um, dipole in each. OK, so here's an example of a dipole. So here we have. Um, a molecule that has a covalent bond in it. And notice that the positive side of the covalent bond lines up with the negative side of a second covalent bond or second molecule. And the amazing thing is that they line up so that they maximize their attraction, but they also minimize their repulsion. So they space themselves so that they're not too close together if they're the same charge. Here's water. Now notice with water, we have oxygen, which has a 2 delta minus charge. So it's strongly attracting both sets of electrons from the two covalent bonds. And each hydrogen has a slightly positive charge as a result of it. So what happens is when you have two water molecules that come in contact with each other, they develop what we call intermolecular forces. So please remember, this dot is not a covalent bond. It's just an attraction with two different molecules. The oxygen in one lines up with the proton or the hydrogen of another. 
Okay, so in order to have a hydrogen bond, you need to have the presence of hydrogen. And then in addition of that, you need to have an unshared pair of electrons. And the only three atoms that you can have are oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. So these three, they have to have an unshared pair of electrons on their atom and um, be covalently bonded with hydrogen. So here we have oxygen, and it has two sets of lone pair of electrons. You don't see them right now, but they're there. And then it has a covalent bond with hydrogen. Okay, the reason why I show you this diagram here is this actually shows why hydrogen bonding or why water has such a huge difference in boiling point. So here we have hydrogen bonding. Here we have um, H2S, hydrogen sulfide. Notice it's a negative 100. It does not have hydrogen bonding. So water has a strong attraction with itself and because of that it has a high boiling point. Now you might notice that here we have hydrogen uh, selenide and hydrogen telluride. Um, something else is going on with these two guys and we're going to talk about what that is. Okay, here is an example of water now water, the amazing thing is, it arranges itself so that the oxygens are facing another hydrogen and the hydrogens obviously are facing another oxygen. And this is what gives water some of the special properties that it has. And I'll show you that in class. Um, you'll, you'll get to see some of my demos with water. Okay, so this is the second type of attractive force and it's called London force or induced dipole. Now, for instance, you have a atom that has a lot of electrons in it, and that's what these blue dots represent. For an instantaneous moment, notice that part of the atom has a negative charge on it, and that's an accumulation of electrons on one side, and then the other side of the atom has a slightly positive charge. This is a quick uh, switch that the atom makes. It's not permanent like the dipole-dipole attraction. It's a temporary attraction. So what happens is you have atoms that organize their electrons like that and they actually cause the adjacent atom to do the same thing. So for instance here we have um, a slightly negative charge here but then we have a slightly positive charge on the other side. And this causes the other atom next to it to organize itself so that it has a slightly negative charge side on this side and a slightly positive charge on the other side. That's why we call it induced. So it's forcing another atom to arrange its electrons to one side of the atom. So here's another example where we have atom A and it's essentially forcing atom B to arrange its electrons to one side. Because this side has slightly positive charge, atom B has a slightly negative charge on its side facing atom A. And this is a quick um, instantaneous dipole. It's not permanent. It will fluctuate between the different sides. Here is two sets of hydrogen bonds. And notice that the um, hydrogen bond in A has a slightly positive charge on this side, and it forces the second molecule to develop a slightly negative charge on this side adjacent to it. So like I said, this is a quick and not a permanent situation. Okay. They do the same thing that um, dipole dipoles do. They arrange themselves to maximize their attraction and minimize their repulsion. But this force is much weaker than the dipole dipole force. So when you look at liquids that have instantaneous induced dipoles, they are not going to stick together as strongly as maybe water will. Okay, here's my summary. So please remember that gases, they tend to condense at low temperatures. You want to minimize kinetic energy so that the molecules will clump together and stick together. All right, we talked about two types of intermolecular forces. 
Um, dipole, dipole, you need to have a bond where um, the electrons have a stronger attraction for one of the atoms. And hydrogen bonding is a specific type of dipole, dipole. You need to have unshared electrons like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine with a presence of a covalent bonded hydrogen. And then lastly, we have induced, induced dipole forces. These occur with nonpolar molecules, so they equally share their electrons in the covalent bond, but like I said, they instantaneously arrange themselves, so there's a slightly negative charge on one side of the molecule and a slightly positive charge on the other. Um, these are very weak, attractive things.